Welcome to all of our GTR 24H fans for another interview. This time I'm here with the one move esports driver of Matthew DeCro. Matthew, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. How are you doing? No problem. I'm doing okay. I'm doing great. It's been uh, it's been a tough year already, but uh, but uh, good uh, good signs and uh, improvements and uh, and uh, and yeah, looking forward for the rest of the season actually. Now, usually when we do these interviews, sometimes we get people you know at their desk, sometimes in the sim rigs. I'm really enjoying the fact that you're in it, that you're in your car. So you've got to tell me straight <laughs> off the bat, what what car do you have? Oh, it's uh, it's uh, now the A4 Avant. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a car I've been uh, having for, for a couple of years now, I'd say three or four years. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, really sorry about the place I'm at right now. It's, uh, I mean, my, my wife has been asking for for a lift to, to the shop, so I was like, okay, but hurry up, because yeah, I need to be there at, at three, no later. So yeah, it's been a bit uh, pushy today, but I've, so here I am. I've got to ask then, because my dad, because he, he used to do racing, whenever we go out, I can, you can always tell that my dad's, you know, taking racing line through corners roundabout. Do you ever end up scaring your wife a bit then when, when you're out on the road? Uh, no, usually I'm uh, driving uh, pretty safe on the road, uh, respecting the limits and, uh, and uh, staying within the, the white lines. Yeah. Uh, it already no, no happened. Curbs, I've no curbs, right? Yeah, there already, already once. I have to say that was, I think, uh, back in Christmas. I was uh, going uh, to south of France, actually coming back from it. And with all that uh, COVID situation, uh, I mean, yeah, there were a lot of people. That was huge traffic, uh, huge tra traffic jam. I've never seen that before in France. But yeah, that was terrible. So the GPS uh, make us, I mean, take um, um, uh, a parallel road if you want, like. Um, right. Yeah, countryside roads, and uh, yeah, there were the new BMW Z4 in front of me, pushing like hell. So I was trying okay. to follow it, and uh, yeah, my wife was like, <laughs> "Stop, <laughs> going crazy, going crazy." Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the season so far because there are yep. two One Move Esports teams. One, yep. which is your team in the GTE class, and the other yep. one in the GT3 class. Now, last season, you guys were racing in LMP2 in the prototypes. Uh -huh. What was the decision to switch from the prototypes to the GT cars? Uh, well, first of all, I think uh, that was a matter of, uh, of, uh, of team branding. Um, the last few seasons we've been driving along with Roy um, at, uh, at ProSim on the first one and uh, with the LMP2 then, the prototype class, and uh, the year after um, at um, B32 Racing with the guys so uh, that was two great years and um, and i know roy has uh, has a preference for the prototype uh, cars uh, for sure the thing is we had to 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 gather more drivers for the upcoming season i mean that season this one the 2020 and 2021 right um, and the drivers actually i mean the other drivers we found actually preferred uh, driving the gte class on the 26th car actually Okay. Uh, the the ones from the 31st car were uh, actually not new to GTR 24. I mean, uh, Ludovic um, Darkey was uh, was already there at GTR 24 before, but the two others were not, and uh, thus we decided to to put them into the GT3 class, the rookie class, straight away, that they get a glimpse a little bit of uh, what the championship is about, and uh, and um, that they can make their own. Um, on the judgments on the, on the level uh, throughout the championship among the drivers. Well, you say you put them in the GT3 classes, you know, usually referred to as more of the rookie class, and yep. they're performing fantastically well so far, currently sitting third in the championship, coming off a win. But in the GTE class, the GTE team is struggling a little <laughs> bit more. You've had, you've had the P7 in Indianapolis. I have to say. I'd like to know, you know, because for me, when I first started commentating on GTR, One Move Esports were such yep. a strong team. So, can myself, can any of your fans out there really hope for you know One Move to be uh, picking up the positions? To be back this? on uh, on their actual pace. I mean, the usual pace. Yeah, I think uh, it's the goal we're looking for. That's for sure. 
Uh, it's been, uh, I think you've maybe heard of it, but uh, it's been uh, it's been tough years, uh, those two last years actually. Uh, we've had, uh, not necessarily at uh, GTR 24, but other championships, uh, endurance championships, we have, we've we had quite a lot of uh, hardware issues on my side specifically, okay. where, I mean, we were in uh, in good positions at the beginning of races and um, and suddenly my, my, my computer just, uh, just crashed in uh, every single race. So when you having that for the entire races for an entire season, it's it's getting you uh, pretty much frustrated, considering you're spending a lot of time on practicing. And uh, yeah, I mean that's every single driver will say it. In I mean wh whatever the team, it's a lot of efforts put into uh, into trying to compete and be uh, at our best. And uh, that's clearly what, what what we did, and we could never could never go to the end with it. So that was for the past years, and uh, it brought a lot of uh, frustration among uh, among the drivers. And uh, well, I can understand. And I think this year uh, we 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 simply did not put um, enough. Um, I wouldn't say energy, but faith into uh, what was still um, doable, what we were capable of. And um, so I think we we can be really strong, but we just need to to get some more faith into our spirit. Uh, as a team uh, on the 26th car. Um, well, that's the side, that's one side of it. The other will be that, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we all have our actual lives and, um, and uh, it's been, um, it's been uh, really hard to gather drivers, uh, specifically for last race, for example, at, at Sebring, I was driving with Ludovic uh, and uh, he's, he's had a lot of work to do uh, on his side and I couldn't get myself free enough uh, to get decent practice. And uh, yeah, we just had a, a really di difficult race on that one. We couldn't manage the rain properly. I mean, uh, we were we couldn't stop switching between uh, uh, rain and uh, and uh, and dry tires. I mean, yeah, that that was a mess. Clearly not uh, good enough preparation for that one. Now you mentioned that you haven't potentially had enough preparation. We do have a long break. I think it's two to three months before round of four at the yeah. Nurburgring. But at the same time. It's a huge track, one of the most difficult, probably the most difficult track in the world to, to remember. So what is it like for you and the rest of the team? Is it a track that you yourself are familiar with or will you be needing a lot of practice to get familiar with the circuit? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, more of an effect, uh, especially in endurance races, uh, to get the car to behave uh, in a way that every driver gets comfortable with it. Yeah. Uh, whenever you know the track or not, I mean, that's my point of view. Um, uh, getting, yeah, the car to behave like uh, everyone uh, can like it the best, uh, the most. And um, and yeah, so we know the track. Uh, it's good, like you say, that, uh, that uh, it gives us um, a couple more um, uh, time to a uh, longer period to, uh, to, to get some more um, practice and, uh, and pace uh, over that race. That round, um, we have had a, truck, um, a talk with uh, our sponsors, and uh, yeah, because uh, as you're saying, I mean that's the same for us. Uh, we are we identify the fact that um, that uh, it's been difficult those last uh, races, and um, yeah, just uh, making uh, some kind of a debrief, uh, what's what was going on and uh, what was to expect. We're definitely looking to to perform better and uh, and uh, to be back on um, where we are supposed to be, and uh, we'll do our best to uh, to make that happen. You, you mentioned your sponsors and at GTR we always like to hear yep. more about team sponsors so who are the companies the organization who keeps one move esports uh, going well uh, one of them is uh, is uh, maybe you know about it it's called the uh, hard info uh, um, uh, for which uh, John uh, Fabricius Terrell is uh, is the CEO um, he's been uh, actually helping us quite a lot um, necessarily uh, ad identifying um, uh, hardware issues. Um, and so they help us a lot uh, on that way, um, providing uh, PC hardwares and stuff like that, coolings and, uh, and, and, and so on. Uh, also giving us um, a lot of help on uh, providing uh, hardwares for the actual physical event in Denmark. Hopefully we can uh, get there. Considering COVID situation, uh, yeah, it sucks really. I mean, uh, we're really looking forward to, to get there. and. Uh, I really hope it's going to work that way. And the other one is uh, called Youth Detailing. Um, it's the, it's uh, it's my brother's uh, company actually. He's um, is uh, doing some uh, detailing so, uh, uh, services for for cars. Uh, car, okay. I mean car detailing. Yeah, yeah. 
So he's based in South of France, and he, he actually loves the fact that uh, that uh, there are such kind of uh, of events and championship uh, around uh, sim racing and esports in the, in general. And he's really looking forward to uh, to um, helping that uh, that uh, industry, let's say, uh, go up a little bit. So yeah, they're providing us with some uh, some uh, some financial aids uh, to uh, to get the tickets and uh, and stuff like that. Really helping. Well, that's fantastic to hear. So pretty much the last question that I do want to bring up for One Move Esports, um, and this goes for both the GTE team and the GT3 yep. team. What's the goal for the end of the season? How high are both of the teams aiming? Well, I think um, the speaking from the GT3 class drivers, um, which actually had a message uh, saying that um, they were really pleased with the uh, overall championship and, uh, and uh, the way it performs uh, and uh, are really happy to be uh, in so competitive uh, battles uh, with the Mugen, uh, Danish and Unison teams. Uh, really, they're always looking forward to race against them and uh, it's a pleasure for them. I think uh, they simply want to do the best they can. Uh, I'm pretty sure they can uh, they can fight for the championship onto the GT3 um, uh, class. They are practicing enough and uh, I think they just probably maybe need to, uh, to get a bit more regularity. Uh, uh, maybe if that's by losing a little bit of pace, uh, uh, trying avoiding um, small incidents could help. Uh, into uh, climbing back into the championships. So that's something they're really going to work for. And the GTE car, actually, I mean, seeing our, um, our standings in the, in the championship, um, I wouldn't say we expect uh, to be on top at the end of the season, that's for sure. N nevertheless, we, we really want to make it the best we can to, uh, to, to bring some more, some more challenge for our competitors and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and show what we can really do when the, when the team is at its best and, um, and, uh, and that we perform properly, like we should. Well, Matthew, And really looking forward, hopefully, to get to the Denmark event. I really hope it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. That's something, I mean, that's what we were, we were at, at first for uh, at GTR 24H. Yeah. That's the base of, uh, of your event and, uh, and that's the, the main thing we'd like to, to uh, participate in. Well, I think at the moment the plans are that the um, LAN event will be happening and I know I myself am looking forward to meeting all of the drivers that are there, so yeah. it should be fantastic. But Matthew, thanks again for your time. It's been wonderful to speak no to problem, you. Best of luck to you and the thanks one Thanks for inviting me. No problem at all. <laughs> well, thanks and uh, catch you later, buddy. Okay.